Hello and welcome to Clay Shooter TV. Later in the show, Simon O'Leary will be on with us with his usual technique tips and Drennan Kildine with his gun and gear reviews. But this morning, I'm at the National Clay Shooting Centre at Bisley uh, with the CEO of the CPSA, Ian Parker. It's good to have you on the show. Thanks very much, good to be here. It is a live range, so there will be a bit of noise disruption. But uh, l a bit later on, we will be talking about the work of the CPSA. But first off, Let's uh, look back over the years majors. Um, has it been a good year for competition shooting? Yeah, first of all, good morning, thanks. It's been a fantastic year this year, probably one of our busiest ever. Um, you know, we start out, we, we have oh, nine majors per year that the CPSA run. Um, and this year we had the Worlds as well. But we start out in May uh, with the English Open. Um, and that was a, a fantastic competition, so much so we actually had to add days on. Uh, because it was oversold, uh, which was great. Um, fantastic competition at Air as well. It was their first big major sporting event for us and they did a, a phenomenal job uh, for us, went above and beyond. Um, so yeah, it was a, a fantastic start. And uh, after the sort of four or five days of competition, um, Richard Folds uh, came out as the, the champion, which was a, a great start to the season. Yeah, Richard's been on fire, hasn't he, this year? Yeah, he's, I mean, obviously he's won pretty much, you know, everything from Olympics all the way through to uh, this year he won the English. Uh, he also won the um, the skeet, uh, British Open skeet as well. Um, so it was a, a phenomenal year for him um, and, uh, and and a great year, as I say, for our championships. Good. And uh, how about the big one, the World Sporting? Yeah, the Worlds, uh, which we run every other year, we share it with our partners over in America, the NSCA. Um, so we, we, we have it every other year and it really has developed into a, a sort of mammoth uh, competition to run. Uh, we're already planning even now for 18 months time when it's back over here again. Um, but it, uh, we, again, we had to add two extra days on because we sold out within hours. Um, and we run multiple competitions within the world, uh, with the World English Sporting being the main competition. Uh, and a, a fantastic, a real festival of shooting this year. Um, Churchill's uh, host it for us and they did just a phenomenal job uh, from Jamie uh, Peckham as the course setter uh, through to Rob and Victoria and their whole team running it. Um, everything from referees, I mean, even things like you've got to have over 70 referees every day at the championship. So it's a, it's a huge, huge event. Um, and, and a fantastic one. Um, at the end of it all, we have a, a super final at the end of it, which we had, I think, nearly 400 people watching, um, which was you know, fantastic. Um, so I think that is a real celebration of clay shooting. Uh, and at the end of all, it was great to see Sam Green uh, come out victorious uh, at the end of a really exciting super final. Worked really well. Sam's one of uh, Browning's uh, sponsored shooters and Browning are uh, one of our new headline sponsors. So, so that worked well as well. Uh, okay, so but it was really great to see Sam uh, have such a good championship in a great year. Yeah, so Sam won the main title, didn't he? How about the Sport Trap? Uh, sport Trap, uh, that went to uh, a shooter called Guy Franklin. Uh, Guy's, uh, you know, uh, a lovely guy, love, great shooter. He's been away uh, from competing for a, a little bit just with the pressures of work. Um, and uh, I talked with Guy quite a bit and this year he came back and shot phenomenally. Um, and, you know, it was great to see him back really in the mix. Mm, yeah, well, congratulations to all the winners and of course to everyone who took part. Um, for people who want to shoot your competitions, they have to be CPSA members, don't they? So yeah, can you tell right. us a little bit about the benefits of becoming a member? Um, so our membership uh, packages we offer are quite varied. Um, you know, everything from a clubman membership right the way through to a, a full competition membership. And that's really to allow, you know, clay shootings, different things for different people. Some people don't want to compete, um, but they still want to be members. Uh, they still want to be part of the association. Um, and with that, the benefits they get uh, are, are a raft of benefit, benefits. One of them, the main one's insurance. Some people will join just for our insurance package, um, which is you know a, a sector leading package that offers not just public liability and personal injury liability, but also with our full membership uh, offers revocation cover as well for license revocation. Um, so I think when you look at our membership, um, you know, it, it offers all those positives. It also offers a pool magazine that we send to all of our members uh, every month, which again covers everything from competitions, 
product, uh, shooting tips, uh, all the way through to grounds, uh, information on what's happening. Um, so it's, it's a, a membership package for, for all of the members, whatever your interest is in clay shooting. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Uh, you mentioned licenses. Now, so this has been a big year, hasn't it, in terms of um, challenges, I guess, arising. Do you want to run through what the CPSA uh, gets involved with in terms of that? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the legal and legislation side uh, of our sport and the challenges we're facing on that is a, a critical um, you know, part of, of my job and the CPSA's job. Um, and, and really that's covering both legislation and, and legal challenges that come along to do with either licensing laws. Um, you mentioned there about um, getting your certificates. That is definitely a challenge uh, and a challenge for the association uh, and for members of either just reviewing licenses um, or um, you know, new members coming in, which is key to the sport, key to the association. Um, and just trying to get a, a, a new certificate, a new grant at the minute, is definitely a real challenge for people. And we're working with police forces, we're working with the BSSC that uh, we sit on and we're members of. Um, so we're working on multi-different tactics of, of how we can influence, how we can improve licensing and help the police force uh, in do that. Uh, I work with various constabularies, um, and it, but it is an ongoing process. As well as legislation, obviously lead, um, you know, lead legislation and the proposals there for the last two years have been a big part of my job um, and, and working on that um, of, of, as that process has developed. We're now getting towards the end of that process um, and we're, you know, we're educating and keeping our members informed of, of how that's going and we'll continue to work to protect our sport and protect our members. Hmm. Fantastic, yeah. Um, so let's get back to shooting. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, obviously the season's over and winter's coming. Um, does the CPSA go into hibernation or is there things that uh, viewers can get involved with over the winter? Yeah, um, hibernation not at all. We, we sort of, as soon as one season finishes, we're already planning uh, next season. We've got a really busy year next year. We've got another World Championships in DTL. Uh, that'll be up at Bywell. Uh, in July uh, and we look forward uh, to, to going up there. Uh, that'll be the ICTSF World DTL Championship. Um, we obviously then are planning all of our other um, championships for, for next calendar season. Um, but before that, the other side of um, yeah, the association is things like events and things that we go to. So things like the British Shooting Show we attend, the Game Fair. Um, and then before that, we actually have the CPSA Awards that we've just launched. Um, then we're in the nomination stage of that at the moment um, and then the actual awards uh, uh, next March uh, which we hold and that's for all of our members to nominate people in the various categories um, and then we go into the voting phase where the members vote for who they think are the worthy winners. Uh, all culminates in a great evening um, in, in March where we uh, have a, the presentations and the trophies uh, are already there. But it's, uh, it's, a, it's a really well organised, really well supported event to, to really celebrate um, you know, people from across our sport. Sounds good. Well, thank you very much for your time this morning, Ian, and for inviting us down. And uh, thank you, viewers, for tuning in. Uh, we will now move over to Simon O'Leary at Hound Hall Shooting Grounds, who will be giving us some winter shooting tips. Well, autumn's here, we're coming to the end of the year and especially the competitive clay shooting season. What better time to take an overview of how we can better ourselves for the oncoming season. Welcome to a new episode and indeed the last of the season, Clay Shooter TV. So, end of the season. Um, 
how's your year been? How have you got on? How's your shooting been? Do you know what? If you're one of the few people that's really happy, totally content, then that's fabulous news and long may it last. I think it's fair to say though that probably there'll be quite a few people that maybe will have an idea in their head of something they can do better, uh, some sort of value they want to add. Maybe it's sort of in the mind or, you know, hardware, clothing, gun. So I thought, you know what, as it's the end of the season, why don't we run through a few of those points that can definitely will add value. Uh, I thought it'd be sort of a simple thing to start off with cartridges. Now, so often than not, uh, people will tend to use a brand because their mate uses them. That's cool. But normally because their mate maybe shoots better. OK, and uh, cartridge companies will probably hate me for saying this, especially as we've got our amazing uh, sponsors, Ely, who have, by the way, sponsored the whole series, um, is actually not the best way to go. The idea is to find a cartridge that best works for you. And by that, I mean how that works with your gun. Now, some people uh, are against pattern plates. For me, I think they're really good. They're not the be all and end all, but they give you a feel and they show you how that cartridge behaves through your gun. So it might be a starter to do just that. Get onto a ground, go and rent a guide or you know, get a coach and instructor and go down and put a few of your shells through, maybe then a couple of your mate shells, whatever brand they are, and maybe a, bit, a couple of additional ones. Think about the load sizing, think about your chokes, stand properly, take the shots, see what the results are, and more importantly, see how it feels with you. Because all of these points we're gonna talk about today all lead back to confidence and proper focus. So cartridges, a melee of choice, a melee of prices. Think about what you're doing, what's your discipline? You know, are you sporting, are you, are you skeet, are you down the line? Are you someone that maybe shoots in the field sometimes as well? So have a think but make it a personal choice that's best for you, not just because your mate uses them. All right, shells in place. What about the gun? Does it fit? And are we mounting correctly? Um, two terms that you're probably sick and tired of hearing because uh, they're mentioned all the time and I would almost agree with you. However, being a full-time instructor, um, Everybody's different and there is nuance, but there are some, some, some patterns, some stuff that happens all the time, and that is mount. Not so much gun fit, but certainly mount. Now, we know universally there's sort of, well, there are some hybrids, but let's go with there's three mounts. And I'm going to actually show those with a uh, Pro Black, which is a yield. It's going to get a quick, uh, a quick sales pitch in here. They've been sponsoring the show, certainly, you know, for, for half of its uh, uh, period on, uh, on YouTube. So a big shout out to these guys and thank you for supplying these wonderful guns. Side note, actually, I bet there's a huge percentage um, of eight, nine, ten year olds that have learned to shoot on a yield. It's 410, you know, one of the best starter guns out there. But that's just a side note. This is a 12 gauge and it's a pro black. Right. Mount gun fit. Not going to go into detail on gun fit. We have done an episode on that in the past, so revert back to that on the channel. Um, in very loose terms, gun fit is about overall balance, okay, so feel, all right, in its entirety, and then length of pull, comb, cast, so on and so forth. So we want to establish that the gun best fits you. It hasn't necessarily got to or have to have been fitted to you, but that it best fits. From there then, it's understanding the mount for the type of shooting you're doing. I said there's three types. So just loosely, we've got pre-mounted, where one would start with a gun in the cheek shoulder, pull and shoot. Clay shooters, which I guess is largely the audience that are watching, may also do what I call a half gun down. So a bit more instinctive, minimal movement, mounting and moving, lovely. And then obviously the traditional full gun down stock next to the chest and that sort of nice move into the cheek and the shoulder to take the shot. It's absolutely paramount that the fit and the mount work together. Um, 
you could have an ill-fitting gun with a great mount. Uh, you could have a gun that's fitted and have a poor mount. Both will probably give the same results, which is not totally satisfactory. So mount practice, imperative, gun fit. If you're unsure about either, and I know this is an obvious comment, maybe it's worth going for that lesson. And you could incorporate the pattern plate as well because it's all links together. And making sure then that there aren't any minor adjustments that are needed, that the gun's fitting you best, and then you're getting the best results when you pull the trigger. Bear in mind a simple thing. We're getting hotter here now. You know, in summer this year, it was sweltering. One might wear a t-shirt and a skeet vest. That's it, and that's enough. Come the winter, I know modern fabrics and whatnot are thinner, and we haven't, uh, you know, got to rely on something like Dale Boy's fur coat, but it is still going to make a difference with the layer thickness, so on and so forth. So, it might be as simple as having two butt pads, and we've got a longer one for the summer, and a fractionally shorter one for the winter, and by shorter it could be no more than a quarter of an inch. So just stuff to bear in mind. Imperative, but the gun feels nice, you've got a nice mount, and that you're mounting a gun that best fits. Now, as I said earlier, um, through being a full-time shooting instructor, um, the wonder, well, there's many wonders in that job, but obviously it's the clients, all the differences with the people, you know, their take, their, their, their focus, their look, great fun. But there are lots of things that overlap. Now, another one of these I've seen recently, if you like, for no reason, doesn't make sense, is people actually being aware but actually exercising their style of shooting, right? So by that, uh, swing through, pull away, method, as it's called by the CPSA, or maintain lead, right? I know there's some hybrid versions, you know, swing to and so on and so forth, but let's just keep it basic. The three styles. People will suggest that they shoot a certain style, or indeed a couple or all three, which is really cool because I see actually logic in all of those sort of trains of thought. But it's then when they actually mount the gun to shoot a target and think that they've missed behind or stopped the gun. And actually, it's not that that was the fail, it's the actual fact that they haven't shot in the style they think they shoot in. So, basic example, I had a client a little while ago, shoot swing through, Mr. Target stated that uh, she might be, you know, behind. And actually, she'd mounted in front, so, you know, a maintained. Oh, where am I? Don't know. Move the gun, pull the trigger, hope for the best. So the behind wasn't actually the fail, if you want to call it. That sounds a bit heavy. It was actually that she'd mounted and then it's all just sort of, you know, gone to pot. So it, it, it sounds a really basic thing and a really obvious thing. And most of you might go, that's ridiculous. But there are some that in the heat of the moment, in that tenth of a second, when you've seen the target and you move, that you rush, you know, or it goes out the window and you just hope. So uh, practice, get it in your mind, understand the styles, and then make sure that you're exercising that specific style for that specific target. And hopefully then you'll, you know, connect and have success. But more importantly, it gives you information, should you miss, you can then mentally break down why you missed. If you've mounted correctly, gone through the motion, it might have been the mount, barrel off line, might have been the muzzle speed, you know, over lead or under lead, and it simplifies things, rather than you shooting, missing, going, ah, you know, what's happening, and then getting more labor intensive and frustrated and, you know, disappearing off down a route of, uh, you know, pain and misery. So, basic as it sounds, understand all the styles and then understand which one individually or which one of those that you use and why to make the best step forward. Pull. We're back, sorry, I was just trying the other gun that our sponsors have lent us, which is the 
Pro Steel. You noted earlier, I mentioned the Pro Black. Um, beautiful, really lovely bits of kit. Get onto Yield It's, have a look at the website. There's a huge range of new guns, prices for all. Give them a look. It brings me nicely, actually, into sort of pulling all the other points together, <clears throat> which is creating this sort of inner confidence, this sort of lovely feel of, you know, flow of sort of synergy, you know, all those words, right? Um, <clears throat> you know, when you get that shot and the movements are almost one step ahead of your thoughts and you do the perfect shot, break the clay done. And someone might go to you, wow, God, you know, what was the lead? What was this? You'd like to know. I just did a da, bang, smash. That's when you're sort of, you know, at your peak, when you're totally tuned. And actually it's the points that we've talked about today that all add up to make this sort of whole, if you like. I use the analogy of the, you know, light bulbs, inline circuit. One bulb goes out, they all go out. You could be stood nicely, miss mount, ah, miss. Um, stood nicely, perfect mount, muscle speeds off. So it's like one thing that throws all the others. And we find this in lessons. You know, people will come in a little bit het up. Oh, I think I'm, you know, I think I'm, I'm, I'm sort of over leading. I think I'm this, I think I'm that. You know, literally a minor adjustment on one point seems to make everything glow and pop. So it's, it's I would say it's never as bad as you think, not by a long shot. So focus, confidence, you've done your stance, you've done your mount, your gun fits nicely or best, you're happy with your cartridges, you know what they're doing, you can feel them, you know what they're doing, you know what they're like in the shoulder, everything's sort of becoming like one. Um, Practising on targets, maybe start on something simple, get the groove, get the blood pumping, shoot something you know you can shoot put into practice the style. I shoot across a swing through, then shoot it swing through. Get the feet in position. Going really clay shootery, fall back onto your kill point, your hold point, your pickup point, and keep everything really nice and tidy and calm. Um, to finish off this, um, it, it, it's a really funny thing, you know, because all we're really trying to achieve with a shotgun is to put a load of lead in front of a target and the target's flying at a speed on its line of travel and you've got to put that lead slightly quicker just in front of it. So when you think about it, it's actually really basic and quite agricultural. So I think the idea and the, the point of making these points is don't rely on outside stuff to better your shooting. Your shooting will be made better by you. But what you're doing is just getting a few implements that best fit and best work for you so then you can do your best. And of course, the other thing on the side of that is time spent. So methodical slow practice, nice and enjoyable, and ultimately always keep it safe. I think this brings us to the end of this last episode, the end of the season. Um, we've had a great year. I hope you've enjoyed the channel. We've had great fun. Um, we hope to see you again in the spring. If you're still awake, uh, you'll find me over on our YouTube channel at Hound Hall Shooting. So please pop across and take a nose. Um, with that said and done, I'm going to get Adam to dance over there with a camera and we're going to shoot some of these Ely cartridges with these Yield It's guns. Have a great one. See you soon.
So today, we're going to be trying out the new Webley & Scott Procom. As you can see from the footage, one is a conventional wooden stock and one is Webley & Scott's version of a fully adjustable stock. Both the stocks are glove grip as well. The Webley & Scott fully adjustable stock is actually a steel stock so it is quite heavy. The wood one, that's a conventional stock really with a normal length of pull but it does have glove grip, the same as the, the metal one, and adjustable cone so you can adjust the height and the cast on cast off. Moving to right to the end of the gun and I'm going to work back. Well, both of them are multi-choke with five chokes. They come in 30 and 32 inch and you'll notice that the chokes have got this periwinkle blue on there and as you'll see on the rest of the guns there's periwinkle blue here, 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 here and here. It looks quite nice actually to be quite honest. Going back to the barrels double ventilated, top ventilated rib, mid ventilated rib, front sight, usual red fiber optic kind of style, center bead, for some reason I don't know why it is a metal one, but it is. Um, the barrels are finished in a graphite Cerakote finish, which is extremely durable and very hard wearing, which is also what the action is covered in as well as is the top lever and the safety catch, the trigger guard. Coming to the trigger, they are actually adjustable triggers. So you can alter the length of grip, which is good because you don't find that on all the guns, which you should do. Three inch chambers, high performance steel um, proofed as well. So it's got some future proofing in. So if you are out and you've got some three inch cartridges and a high performance steel, you can shoot them through this. Beaver style forend, both the stock and the forend have laser cut checkering. You'll notice on the forend, it's a little bit small the checkering, it doesn't cover the forend completely, it's just about enough to actually get a grip on it. Whereas on the stock, there's plenty of the checkering panel on there and it covers it quite well actually. Um, both for your palm side and where you grip with the end of your fingers around the other side. Now, a lot of people are going to look at these and they're going to go, especially with this one here, and I have to say and be honest, um, it does look a bit, ooh, well, never judge a book by its cover. So really, the best thing to do is, enough said in here, let's go and put these through it, their paces and see what they're going to do. We're going to put a mixture of ammo, 21, 24, 28, and see what they behave like. So before I even go out there, I'm not going to go, oh, I'm not really sure about that or about that, because, yeah. We need to shoot them first so I can give you a conclusion. And on that note, I'll see you on the shooting ground. So, what's my conclusion of Webley and Scott's Pro Comp series in 12 gauge only? Well, we've got some minuses and we've got some positives. And I'm going to start off with the case first. The case that it comes in, whether you have the metal stock or the wooden stock, is actually very, very, very good. It's almost militarised. I really like the case, it's very good actually. Now coming to the guns, and as always, let's get the negatives out of the way. And there are some, and which you'd expect with a gun that's starting around about 1200 for the wooden stack and 1350 for the metal one. And the biggest negative for me is, without doubt, is the trigger pull. The trigger pulls have got a lot of travel on them. 
as you'll see from here before you even get the pressure on to fire it now i struggled with it but my cameraman didn't but he's not a shooter he's only ever shot a gun i think that was his second time yeah so he doesn't know about triggers whereas somebody like me does so you have to be very careful with that if you're already an experienced shooter and you're going to pick this gun up there's a high chance you're going to struggle with the trigger because when you pull it you're expecting it to fire and it doesn't you've really got to come back and then put quite a bit of pressure on the trigger for it to fire um they're quite woolen actually which sort of then defeats the object of a, gl a glove grip which is what these stocks are so that your finger is always in the right position all the time and literally when you do that it should go bang but it doesn't on this that's one of the negatives one of the other negatives what you could turn it into a positive is the weight of them i mean the wooden stock one is just shy like of an ounce of nine pound the metal stock version is just shy of 10 pound they're heavy they are heavy but as you've seen in my other videos as well if you use physics a heavy gun soaks up recoil and i will say actually they do soak up recoil very very well now i have heard both in the trade and out on the shooting grounds that the metal version is trying to copy TSK or Ergo's on. They're not, really. I don't think Webley and Scott have even intended to do that because they have no representation to any of those other stocks that you can fully adjust. The adjustment on the metal stock is limited. Yes, you can adjust the comb, you can send cast off, cast on, lift the height up, you can lengthen the pull quite easily it's just a set of allen keys it's not rocket science it's virtually meccano level and you can adjust the cast and the pitch a little bit on the heel again it's not a tsk or an ergo on. certainly not nowhere even close to an ergo on. but it does work ish if you're looking for that sort of entry level kind of just want to see what a glove grip stock's like the balance weight for me it really didn't make any difference where i put it did it alter the balance yes it did but because it's such a heavy gun anyway it's i found it a little bit hard to recognize so that's pretty much the negatives of the both of them really because as i've said before in the intro from the action all the way up the barrels are the same these are the 32 inch they do do a 30 so that's a little bit lighter what you will see from the shooting footage is, in case you might have heard this myth and rumour that's flying around, you can't use a glove grip on sporting. Well, I, as you'll see on the footage, me shooting, I've proved that you can shoot a glove grip on sporting. And many years ago, I used to on my DT-10, I had an Ergozyme glove grip stock like that. So which one would I go for? To be quite honest with you, it's really going to be down to preference for what you want. If you want a conventional stock, that's more than adequate for an entry. And it is an entry level competition gun. And then you've got the metal one, which, like I said, is very heavy, but it does soak up recoil lovely. And uh, you've got a bit more adjustment on it. Who is it going to suit? It's certainly not going to suit a top end shooter. It's not going to shoot a comp shooter either. This is, as Webley and Scott have said, designed for somebody or the people that are looking for a competition gun that's just got a little bit more toys and bells and whistles on it. And it does do it, there's no doubt about it. You know, single selective trigger ejector, three inch chambers, um, high performance proof, so when steel comes, which it will do that these sort of guns are going to be having no problem of doing that. So for the market they designed that, the people that are just starting in shooting or have been shooting a little bit and they just want to see what a comp gun is really like, but maybe the price is a little bit too high to go into the other brands. These are really ideal. They, they really are. We had no problem shooting them. Uh, apart from the trigger they 
you know, they swing. You've got to put a bit of effort into these, though. They are heavy. They're not a forgiving gun. You've got to really work at it, and you'll see from the footage of me shooting. You've got to work hard. You've got to put a lot of effort into these. What should I expect from a gun of this uh, weight and this kind of design? So all in all, I think Webley and Scott there have done quite a good job of putting something together that's just over a thousand pounds for people to actually experience what these sort of full competition grade stocks are like. And I really can't fault them for what they've done there. As long as you understand that that's why they're that price. I mean, if you look at this one, it's 1,350 pound. An ergo sign stock on its own is £2,000. So, you know, don't try to compare them like some people have both in the trade and on the shoot. They are not comparable. But they, they are exactly what they are. So if you're looking for a gun that's got a five-year warranty, comes with a virtually militarised case, it's going to last a hell of a long time. If you are looking at competition shooting, and you're unsure maybe on budget or you just don't really want to make that commitment yet these are ideal for something like that they're certainly going to tell you whether you need to go to the next level and on that note i'll see you again Today I'm going to be talking to you about the SENS DX5 digital earpiece. I've had this particular set for just over two years. It's gone around the planet with me several times. It's been used in hot weather, cold weather, miserable weather, rain, wind, sun, shine, blizzards, snow. It's been everywhere. And I'm going to tell you in this review, which is one that's just over two years old, as I've just said, I've owned these, why people like myself and you've all heard of this man's name, George Digweed, MBE, multiple world, European, British, English, blah, 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 super titled shooter, chooses them as well. So we're going to start off with what they come with. Straight away, it comes in their carry box. Got a nice robust standoff. And I'm giving you a little demonstration of how strong this actually is. So inside here is all the uh, electronic stuff for these uh, protectors. But what? That box, trust me, protects the very expensive, but very clever, ear defenders that are inside. It's what I call Drennan proof. And anybody that knows me know I can break anything. So inside you get Quite a few little items in here, but we'll go straight to the main one, which is another little box. And in here is the magic. And those are the earpieces. And I'll come to them a little bit more in a second. But you'll see this box. It, you're not going to damage your ear pieces, which are a delicate item anyway. And in here, we've also got your gel for putting them in your ears, which I really do suggest you have. Spare batteries. And when it comes to batteries, I've just come back from a month in Africa and I changed the batteries in those twice. So batteries last forever. Especially if you remember to turn them off after you finish shooting. Cleaning devices, separate pouch here for putting your comms in if you want, if you're using walkie talkies to way your communication, because these will attach to these as well. I've got extra batteries in here. I've got enough batteries in here actually to last, well, forever. So that's the outer case, the inner case, and the inner case actually also, you can have your spare batteries in there. This is your magnet for taking your batteries in and out of your devices, which I'm going to show you in a minute how that's done. And it all just folds up, zips up, super neat, clean, tidy, and very, very practical, unlike some things.
So this particular set, like I said, has been with me for over two years. I've used it just in about every situation you can think of, from hot, extreme hot, very, very hot, especially in Africa, um, where I've just come from, all the way up to Scotland, shooting geese in minus six in the blizzard, and it was just absolutely awful and terrible. And I still chose to use these. These are the simplest ear defenders I've ever worn. They fit in my ear very comfortably. They're not hard to put in and they're super comfortable, even in the cold weather, especially in hot weather. And I'll show you why as well. Over the ear moths, which I absolutely think are fantastic and they do a great job. 40 degrees Celsius for weather in Africa. Let me tell you now, my head will overheat and I need to be comfortable. And this is where scents come in. They're super lightweight, I mean, literally, like you don't even know they're in your hand. The module is that it's so small. Batteries go in here. It's your battery that goes in and out with a magnet. It's so easy to do. It's been so well thought out. The engineering in this is absolutely extraordinary. The lids here, you can change these as well to different colours if you want to. I chose this particular mint green and this orange because it stands out when I drop them on the floor. Because I do. And uh, if you spend enough time in the fields like I do, it does happen. So if you're thinking of having a camouflage one, yeah, I might want to rethink it. And on there as well is all your functions. So your on off, your volume and your settings for clay mode, hunter mode, game mode, range mode, comms active, and you've also got passive with these. So it is a phenomenal piece of equipment that you can change just by moving a lever, which also operates your volume. How they've managed to compact all this into this tiny little device is incredible. I've actually been to the Sense factory and is it a factory? It's a laboratory, really. It's a fascinating place to go to. And you see that the skill set that the, the staff have there and their engineers and I don't know, they've got special names, but we'll just call them very clever people. And they really are very, very clever people. When you activate these for clay mode, which is what I use predominantly, when you turn them on, these will tell you what you last used. In fact, my camera is just sitting there now. I turn these on and it said um, game mode uh, because to see, yesterday evening I was out in the field um, after some magpies. So when you turn these on, it will tell you what your last setting is. Even if you take the battery out, it will remember your last setting, whether it was clay mode, game mode, hunter mode, range mode, comms active. And it also remember your volume um, level as well. Now, I can tell you that there is pictures of me out in South Africa shooting a 14.5 millimeter rifle by Travello, which for those of you who don't know, is a 50 cal and a bit more. It's 0.57 so it's massive it will send a bullet 12 miles actually and these in range mode will even uh, work perfect with that so even from your shotgun cartridge rounds which I predominantly use all the way up to well that's a 50 cal and I can tell you that the one I shot in South Africa made that look like a toy so you can cover the range from shotgun ammunition all the way up to rifle ammunition. I know we don't necessarily do much of it in this country, if anything really, but works on pistols as well. And the electronics in here, when you do set, you get some of them and you go, well, is there a difference between that one and that one? Yeah, there really is. The guys at Sens have really worked out why we have those different settings, that it activates it in a different way out in the field, the ambient noise is amplified on different settings, um, walking in the woods and things like that. Absolutely a staggering piece of equipment. So there's other reasons why I recommend Sense, not just because they're a fantastic product and they do exactly what they say on the tin, because it does, and as I've said, it works in every climate. 
is the service you get from Sense. You can have up to a five year warranty with these and in that, if your warranty is uh, valid, you get free servicing. And I do suggest that you have them serviced every year. I have mine serviced every year. Which brings me to Sense customer service. It is second to none. Um, if I need anything from Sense, I like to say a service. If I make an email or make a phone call on a Monday, it'll go out on the Tuesday and invariably it's usually back the same week, which you cannot go wrong. The other thing I like about Sens is they're so confident with their products. I mean, there's multiple world champions around the world using these products. I see these every day on shooting grounds. Customers that come to me who don't know much about these, they ask me, they know I wear them. They've seen me around the world. In fact, we've got people in Africa now, South Africa, who have not seen Sense products before, and they're actually having a, um, a made out there. Like I said, Sense are so confident with their product that they'd like you to be wearing their product. So they've decided on the 24th of November, 2023, they're gonna have the biggest Black Friday deal they've ever done. And you will be able to get to their site on the link that wherever the IT department put these things, and you can click on that. You can go to Sens for their biggest Black Friday deal on the Sens DX5. And on that note, I'll see you again. Well, that concludes what will be the final episode for this year. So thank you for watching. We've loved making these programs for you. And please don't forget to like and subscribe and you'll be notified of any bonus episodes over the winter and of our return in the spring. Catch you on the other side.